Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this series I'm putting together, we're taking the XR2 from Earth out to Jupiter with the eventual goal of landing on Io. Now, of course, the XR2 can't make that journey by itself, at least not without doing quite a few modifications to the CFG files. And I didn't want to do that. So instead, uh, we got up into orbit, docked with the Aero Freighter, which you can see here. And the, we'll be using the Aero Freighter to make that long haul from Earth out to Jupiter. Now, once again, uh, I stated this at the beginning of every one of these videos, and I'll say it again. At the time of this recording, the Aero Freighter is not available for general download. This is like an alpha beta test here that I'm doing uh, for the sake of this video. Uh, thank you, Dimitri, for, for letting me do this. And um, so, yeah, you can't, you can't get this Aero Freighter at the time of the recording. Uh, which is uh, June uh, 2021, um, although I do have a lot of missions already recorded, so by the time this gets uploaded, who knows. But let's, uh, let's jump back into the, uh, the mission here. Let me switch camera views. So in the last video, we docked the XR2 inside of the Aero Freighter, and we were pretty careful about that, so that we didn't ding up the wings or anything like that, although again, I don't think the collision mechanism in Orbiter would actually penalize us uh, had we, I, I think we just would have like no clipped through the uh, through the mesh, but we are still trying to be, you know, careful for the sake of uh, immersion and, and simulation. But now the XR2 is, uh, is safely inside of the Aero Freighter. So let's get inside of the Aero Freighter and you know, uh, button up the uh, the doors. So that would have been the the docking bay, I think. So let me close that. But instead of uh, jumping in and out of you know the internal external view, uh, which I don't like to do anytime I can avoid it, unless it's just strictly for the sake of showing, you know, hey, look at this external view, but. I don't like doing it because I feel like we have to. Uh, but if I bring up the generic camera and we go to, let's see, I guess this view will work because this view gives me a look at the doors. So without you know going external, I can just click here and watch the doors close up. And there we go. And yeah, I think these camera systems are really cool. Um, I'll have to learn how to set these up because when I was docking the XR2, into the belly of the uh, aero freighter, it would have been super cool to to be able to have a couple of cameras on the, um, or at least one camera on our MFD, so that we could see our clearances, you know, between the the back of the vessel and the bottom of the aero freighter. But I didn't know how to do that, so we cheated and used an external view. Okay, so we're ready to go to Jupiter. Um, now, one thing I noticed is that somewhere in my uh, saving config files and all that, I have managed to lose my transex plan despite being careful not to. And I even went back to one of my old config files, uh, one of my old, not config files, but SCN files rather, and I copied the transex plan back into this SCN file, but it didn't take. I'm not sure why. Um, I'm going to say that's not a huge deal breaker because we needed to... Uh, refine our plan at this point anyway so let's just go ahead and start taking care of that so my PE distance here that seems a bit wrong to me maybe that's right but I think it should be 8371.01 E3 okay and we need our uh, we need our eject orientation but we can't get that until we have our our uh, other stuff set up so let's go view setup. So we have escape here. We have Jupiter here. I guess what happened, I don't, I don't know what happened to be honest. Um, and one thing I noticed when I was watching some of my own playbacks, my camera was actually covering up some of the things that were happening. So I'll try to be a bit more conscientious of that. I just didn't notice it. So I, if I keep it like that, my camera shouldn't be covering anything up. So if we view the encounter on this side, and I guess we're just gonna basically quickly go through our um, our plan again so we'll go to rough 
we should be able to dial this in pretty quick because we already know we're at the right date. So rough. Oh yeah, I forgot. We can't. Uh, uh, I, I think this will be okay. If this becomes really annoying, I will switch to the glass cockpit so that I can control these things a bit faster. But so I don't quite remember. I wrote it down though, like what our times and all that stuff was. Just try to get back in the ballpark. So 723 days and a 9.2 dv cost. That that should help me get pretty close back. But if we don't have the exact plan, I'm, I'm not worried about it. Because we're again, we're going to have to even after this eject plan is set up, we're going to have to set up a maneuver anyway. So I just want to be you know in the in the ballpark here. And I remember the eject date was tomorrow because I set the I set us one day ahead. It was a uh, uh, five nine seven three five point six. So okay, and then we did seven nine or five nine seven three four point six when we initially set it up, but some time has passed since then. So right about that time should be close to what we had before. And, and then we had chain uh, plane change, and we had quite a bit, but I don't remember if it was positive, negative, or whatever. All right, this is starting to get a bit tedious already. So I'm going to switch to these views because I can control these MFDs a lot easier. All right, so let's see. And, and again, I'm not worried if I have the exact same thing we had before. I just want to have approximately, and I remember our inclination was about two degrees. So something like that. And that's about the same time we had before. That's about the same delta the cost. So do we need to do anything else? I mean, we're pretty much we pretty much already have it. Um, I guess I can just mess around with our date a little bit. So that's bringing down the minimum altitude. And again, we're targeting IO, so we should probably start thinking about the altitude of IO, which is uh, about 350 m. So we'll start making that part of our plan somewhere in that neighborhood. And then with a little bit of plane change, maybe we'll see if we can dial down that inclination just a tiny bit more. It's not terribly important. And we'll go... Uh, that's good enough, because we're not keeping this anyway. We're setting up a maneuver to replace this. But we need the... We need the, we need the eject plan initially, at least. So let me go back on that side so that I have up my, uh, my total delta V. And let me go uh, back on this side so I can set up a maneuver. So let me see, is there anything I'm missing? Um, I'm missing the eject orientation. Do I even need that though? Because I'm already in orbit. So let, let's just see what we have though. We should have a, a, a very low relative inclination. And let's see. Get my my white line swung around here. Um, I can't make heads or tails of this particular view, so let me go to setup. And we want plan, edge on, ecliptic, focus. I think we want, I think we want, I think we want focus for this one. So let me try this again still looking super weird to me. Why is that looking so weird? Mm. All right, let me think here. So if I view over to set up graph projection, not maneuver, maybe, maybe plan. Maybe that's the one I need. I know I know the relative inclination should be very low, so let me start with that. So it should be somewhere around here. Okay, there I saw the line swing. Okay, so I think we're correct. I think this is the one we want. All right, and which orient? Uh, which view was this? Plan. Okay. Um. All right. So 
adjust. All right, so we're, according to this, we're 0 0.015, let's say. Now, what is it, at, but now the next question is, what is it going to be at the actual eject point? So let me, or can I even see that yet? I don't think I can see that yet. Wait. Okay, yeah, I guess I can. So at the actual eject point, if this information holds, then our, our inclination would be 0 0.015, which is, I would say that's low enough. We don't have to mess with it. And it probably doesn't matter anyway because we're going to create a maneuver to replace the plan that we have. But I think maybe, let me just see something. Um, if I go, let me go prograde in this monster vessel, <laughs> which actually, I'm actually going to do it manually because I'm pretty sure the, the prograde autopilot in this behemoth will overshoot many times before it gets it right. So I'm going to use time warp. So there's prograde. And then up and a little in. And a bit up. Yeah, rotation. Okay, there we are. And just finally a little bit in that direction. And that's prograde. Okay, so what I wanted to see was if I bump my translation thrusters a little bit, can I bring the relative inclination down? And this might not even be worth messing with since we are creating a maneuver to replace all this, but I just want to see, so that's going the wrong way. All right, let's find out. Translation. So, and again, using these bubble, there's there's a way to know which way to translate, but Okay, so that's that's helping, and it's helping a lot, so probably worth it, maybe. And then which way are the numbers counting? So, can't tell yet. So with three decimal points of precision, we have all zero, but maybe and now we have even better than that. All right, I'm gonna just gonna keep it just like that. Now we're going to view over to maneuver, turn maneuver mode on, change our variable to prograde, and we're gonna enter in, I believe it's, I've gotten this wrong more than once, but I believe it's total delta V. Nine, one, eight, zero, and then um, change our variable to date, and we're only going forward by a few minutes, so we're going to go down to uh, Ultra. And then we're going to go Hyper. And then Micro. Now, technically, our the eject date we found wasn't until 735.6. Uh, uh, so we have a couple of options. We can say, who cares? We're just gonna eject the next opportunity we get because we're making a maneuver anyway. Or we could orbit Earth for a while and say, you know, go to like a super setting here and just go one, two, you know, go around a few times so that we're closer to that eject date. Since we're going to Jupiter, I'd say that's probably not worth messing with. Um, but that I just wanted to mention, you know, that's an option. Maybe we can look at both because we have plenty of time. But I, I'm, I'm thinking that since we're replacing this uh, eject plan with the maneuver anyway, it's not, and the timing for Jupiter isn't as tight as it is for like Mercury. So I don't think I care that I'm not actually on the exact time that I had previously figured out. Okay, so now we have our. Um, we have our maneuver 
more or less set up. So now I need to erase my eject plan. And the way we do that is just by going through the variables and anything that has velocity in it, we zero it out just by resetting it. So reset and uh, prograde, I'll probably go backwards, be faster, reset. And now my eject plan's gone. Transx is now prioritizing the maneuver. So we should be able to go forward on this side, view the encounter. And currently uh, the encounter uh, doesn't show Jupiter because we're missing it. So if I go back on that side, I can see that my closest approach is 153 gigameters, pretty far off. So that means I just need to tinker with my variables on the side. And part of that could be that date. Um, so I could potentially, you know, go forward a few orbits and see if that fixes it, which it might. But what I could also just do is say, well, maybe since I'm leaving a bit sooner, maybe I don't need as much prograde or maybe I need more of whatever. So I'm just going to go starting with prograde and I'm just going to add in prograde and see what happens. So that's making things worse. So I'm going to take out prograde and it looks like just taking out some prograde is uh, taking out a lot of prograde. So there's something about that. I, I just, I don't quite understand. That number they give you over there, this is the, this has happened to me before. Where you saw, I put in, you know, exactly what it said, nine point whatever. But now I'm all the way down to 6.5. Why is that so different? Actually, I think I know why. Because that number is a combination of everything, whereas this is just prograde. All right, I think I just answered my own question, I think. Um, anyway, can, do we have an encounter yet? We do. All right, so I can, I'd rather view the encounter. And actually, just as it is, it's not bad. We got a very low inclination. We're at one gigameters. Um, so it's actually pretty good right there. But um, I want to get in, I want to dial this down a little bit better because since we are targeting IO, although, so here's something to consider. You know, we saw a moment ago, if I... You know, if I have this plan here, something like this, right now I'm looking just at the inclination. So if I fly a plan something like this, it gets me within uh, 1.4 gigameters of Jupiter, which as we remember from looking at our uh, orbit MFD, uh, that's somewhere between Callisto and Ganymede. But I have a really low inclination. I could, I'm thinking what I could do is I could fly this plan and then as part of my mid-course correction I can make a very inexpensive maneuver to change my minimum altitude at a later time. So that's something I can consider. Alternatively, I can look at my, uh, my other variables at the moment and try to dial things down, uh, which I will look at. But we are coming up to 20 minutes already, time flies. So let me go ahead and switch camera views here. This new keyboard is bugging me. And when we come back in the next part, we will refine our transex plan and I think we will complete our ejection burn. And that'll probably be uh, what, we'll, what we will be able to get accomplished in the next video. So with all that said, I uh, hope you're enjoying this mission. I know there's a lot of parts to it, but again, I didn't want to leave anything out for my own benefit so that you know later on when I'm trying to remember how to do all this stuff, I can see, aha, that was my thought process. That's how I did it all. And for the benefit of anybody that wants to do this mission or something similar to it, you can see each and every step that I went through from um, you know creating a new vessel in orbiter to repositioning it on the runway to changing the orbital elements of the aero freighter so that it was in plane. So you now have the tools and the knowledge to create your own scenario. Um, and now we're just at the execution phase, you know, kind of the fun part. So when we come back, uh, we will, uh, like I said, we'll finish up our transex plan and do our eject burn. So I will see you in the next video.